Good Friday morning, everybody. Glad to have you here. If you want to follow along this morning, join me in the book of Acts, chapter 25, beginning in verse 10. And Paul is still standing um, trial or headed to trial, kind of uh, somewhere in between uh, being uh, deciding what exactly to do with Paul. And uh, as we uh, remember our passage yesterday, um, we see that uh, they're trying to get him to uh, be transferred back to Jerusalem. Um, but Paul says in verse 10, I am standing before Caesar's tribunal where I ought to be tried. As a Roman citizen, uh, he had the right and to be tried uh, in, a, in Roman court. And so to the Jews, I have done no wrong, as you yourself know very well. If then I am a wrongdoer and have committed anything for which I deserve to die, I do not seek to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with his counsel, answered, To Caesar you have appealed, and to Caesar you shall go. This is, uh, once again, uh, a great example and story of God uh, overruling man, uh, stepping in and uh, exerting his authority over uh, the affairs of man. Uh, the Jews, the Romans, whatever they uh, desired to do with Paul uh, was uh, being uh, overridden by the power of God. And Festus uh, knows, we've already seen that uh, in, uh, in these uh, preceding verses. Paul calls him out in verse 10 and says, You know I haven't done anything wrong. I'm innocent and I should be uh, turned loose. But again, Festus has a desire uh, to make the Jewish leaders happy. And so he's kind of between uh, the proverbial rock and a hard place. And so again, he's uh, tried to figure out a way here where he could get uh, get himself out of it and get himself uh, keep come out of this thing unscathed. Uh, if he could just get Paul to go down to Jerusalem, uh, then he could say he was innocent uh, of those charges uh, and then leave it up to uh, to the Jews to decide. But Paul here steps up, and again we see. Uh, Paul's boldness, uh, as he tells Festus, you know, all of these things uh, could have <laughs> could have got him in hot water with uh, the Roman. Uh, as he declared to him, he says, "You know, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to go to court here. Uh, you're not moving me. I'm going to stay in the Roman court. You're not you're not transferring me." He goes on and declares, "I've done no wrong. Nothing for the Jews to try me for. I don't need to go back." Uh, to Jerusalem. He goes on and he says uh, in that verse, and he says, you know it very well. He says, you know as well as I do uh, that I haven't done anything against the Jews. Uh, and he goes on and, and boldly states, makes a statement that, um, listen, if y'all sentence me to death, I'm not afraid to die. Uh, if I'm guilty, sentence me. I, I'm not scared. Uh, and that um, I'm not going to buckle under and um, you know, you see a lot of times in today's world, uh, people take plea bargains, uh, trying to get maybe a lighter sentence rather than risk going to trial. Paul says, nope, not going for it, not at all. And then Paul does something that uh, probably caused uh, an audible gasp in, uh, in the room, and that was when he said, I appeal to Caesar. That is a huge, um, or was a huge statement, a huge claim in the Roman courts at that time. Festus didn't have the courage, the guts, whatever you want to call it, uh, to act and to turn Paul loose and to declare him innocent. And so Paul says, I appeal to Caesar. And that was a, a right that every Roman citizen had uh, when brought uh, before a uh, into a case where their life was at stake. Uh, you can just, for a parking ticket, but if it was a, uh, a capital case, uh, then you could appeal to Caesar. Uh, and once you did, then nothing uh, could stop it. You had to go to trial before Caesar. You couldn't say that. You, know, you couldn't take it back. Uh, none of the lesser authorities could overrule it. You were, just as, uh, as Festus said, um, you've appealed to Caesar, and to Caesar you shall go. Uh, once you appealed to Caesar, it was 
uh, a, a done deal. And uh, Festus kind of, at this point, I think, realizes uh, he's really uh, messed up because at this point, there was no way, uh, once Paul appealed to Caesar, there was no way he could uh, make the Jews happy with whatever happened. Uh, and also, he knew he was about to send uh, a man before Caesar with a really weak case. And so his wisdom and uh, judgment was going to be questioned. Uh, when Paul stood before Caesar and the charges were read out and Paul made his defense, Festus was going to look like an idiot. And so this was, uh, you know, this, this situation put, uh, put him in uh, a really uh, tough situation. There really wasn't anything he could do about it at this time. He had no choice again uh, but to send him on to Rome and to stand uh, before Caesar. You know, Paul uh, has used every uh, avenue, every legal avenue he could, and his, what he's doing here is, is attempting to make it very clear to everybody, uh, in particular uh, the Romans themselves, uh, that the that Christianity was not the issue. Uh, that Christianity, the Christians were not doing anything uh, to try to uh, to, over, to overturn Rome, to uh, be tra traitors against the, uh, the government of Rome. And furthermore, he wanted to go to Rome. He, he was willing to go to Rome. He was looking forward to go to Rome because he was going to go uh, before what was the, the highest uh, authority, the most powerful person uh, in the land at that time, uh, the highest earthly authority that there was. And he was going to go and give the highest earthly authority uh, a word from the highest authority in heaven and earth. And so he was looking forward to the opportunity uh, to stand before Caesar himself and tell him uh, that he needed to trust in Christ and he needed to believe and submit his own life uh, to Jesus. And so he was willing uh, to take a, a huge chance uh, to share the gospel. And you know, I think about that and I think about where we are today and uh, I know that uh, in in many countries it's uh, very dangerous to have any uh, connection to Christianity, but uh, most of the folks, uh, we do have a few uh, international folks who, who watch and listen, but uh, most of the people who, who do listen to, uh, to me each morning are American. We don't have a real threat. We don't have a real issue. Uh, we don't have a problem, and we still don't have any courage. We, we still won't uh, share the gospel. And uh, I want to, again, Paul's just such a great model to us, and we've seen that over and over. I want you to uh, to, to think about that today as you, uh, not just today, but uh, ongoing. Uh, again, the courage of Paul here, when literally his life was on the line, uh, at any station along the way, um, someone could have uh, had him executed. Uh, but he continued to appeal. Uh, he continued to proclaim the gospel all the way to the highest authority uh, in the land. And again, all Caesar would have had to do was basically say off with his head, and you know that would have been the end of it. But Paul just followed right up uh, to the very end, uh, proclaiming the good news uh, of Jesus Christ. And uh, what a desperate need we have for that in our world today. That uh, so many people. Uh, we, we take for granted that people know about the gospel. Uh, the, the church needs to, to realize and be aware that um, many people in our world today uh, haven't heard the good news of Jesus Christ. They, they haven't, uh, haven't heard uh, that they need to be saved. We just assume they know it. We need to, uh, to quit taking anything for granted and, and recognize that everyone we meet, um, whether it's the highest power in the land uh, or whether it's the man that... Um, polishes his shoes. Uh, they need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. So I challenge you uh, as you go about your day to day, take that message with you, whether it's the cashier at the grocery store or the manager at the grocery store, whether it's your neighbor uh, or one of your own children. Uh, let's carry the good news of Jesus Christ with us wherever we go. Have a good day. We'll see you here tomorrow morning.